Hey guys, Kim here, and you are tuned into Kim E, the Diabetes MP, a place where nurse practitioners can come learn more about diabetes education and management so they can improve their patient outcomes. Now, I am finishing up the last video of this month long series where I've been talking about diabetes technology. Now, we have gone over a brief overview of just a high bird's view of what diabetes tech is. We've talked about glucometers under the self-monitoring blood glucose video. And then we've also dived into continuous glucose monitoring, CGM. And today we're gonna to be talking about insulin pumps. And so if you have been intimidated by insulin pumps, if you wanna learn more about insulin pumps, we're gonna talk briefly about it. And then at the end, I'm going to explain to you guys how you can learn even more about insulin pumps and other diabetes tech. So when we talk about insulin and the delivery of insulin to our patients, of course, we think of syringes, we think of the pins, the vials, we think of that. But we also can deliver our insulin through pumps. Now, one of the things that I have seen and I have noticed is that typically you don't really see too many pumps with your patients that are type two. They can get access to it, but you tend to see people who are on many, many uh, injections. If they have type two, it's because they have multiple injections of um, insulin. Where you really see a lot of your insulin pump therapy, you see that with people who have type one. Now, it's not to say that those that have type two cannot, and I do not wanna make a blanket statement, or, but typically, if a person who has type two diabetes, um, if they have multiple injections, there may be a question as to how well they're able to manage their diagnosis, diagnosis which will make it um, kind of challenging to put them on insulin pump therapy because just like with the uh, just like with CGM, the pump, the person needs to be a good candidate. Okay, um, this is insulin we're dealing with. Insulin. I mean, if people are needing the insulin, if they don't get it. I mean, all kinds of things can happen. Um, if they get too much insulin, all things can, a whole bunch of things can happen, okay? So you need someone who is able to manage their, di their diagnosis well, and that's not everybody. I mean, every person with type one is not a good candidate for pump therapy, let's just be honest. But where I have seen more um, insulin pump therapy, I've seen it more with those who have type one. So let's talk a little bit about that. Now, with insulin pump therapies, and I'm really not seeing too many, I'm pretty sure they're still out there, but you have like the individual entity where there is like your, the pump and it's just the pump. And then you also have like the system where it's the, the combo system where it's the um, CGM as well as the insulin pump. So I see a lot of people with that because it's like a two in one system. Okay. So you have the person and it's all in one device. Now with the insulin pump, they could still be rather checking their blood sugar, pricking their finger, or they have like a separate CGM device, you know, that is hooked up to them or, you know, in place for them. Um, but it's really, I mean, it just seems more convenient to have like the closed loop system where you have it all in one device where there's the CGM as well as the insulin pump. Now, the insulin that's in these pumps, surprise, surprise, it's rapid, okay, insulin, okay? It's not basal, okay? It's not basal insulin. And basically what this rapid um, insulin is doing is it's giving little spurts, little sputters throughout the day to keep, to mimic that basal insulin effect, okay? And of course, training, education has to happen because not only do you need to calculate how much insulin that person is going to get 
every day, but how much they're going to get an hour. You need to be able to set the pump for that. But the thing is, once it's programmed, it's programmed. Okay. And the great thing about the combo system is that the CGM can then communicate with the pump. So if the blood sugar falls, then you can set an alarm. You can, you can set a, what they would call like a suspend limit where it won't give the insulin. And so that's why it's really a great option because that smart technology is communicating there. All you have to do is do the initial calculations. You have to make sure that you put in your parameters, you know, those things like that. But once it's programmed in, it runs. And so you do that, it's a good system. And the great thing too about that as well, we can train our patients with that too. And you see that a lot with your patients that are type one, they know what the correction factor is. They know, they know like what their insulin to carb ratio is, especially if they have had the diagnosis for a while, they know how to do that math in their head. And so a lot of times they can help you, but it's always good for you to know and how to figure that out as well. One common thing that I do want to mention, because I did mention this in the second video, the, uh, the self-monitoring uh, blood glucose video is when you're troubleshooting, what is a common thing that happens a lot? Sometimes what happens, a common thing that happens is that that tubing can get kinked. And the more you get into learning about insulin pumps, and then, you know, just the tubing and the cannula with the CGM, you can learn that there's different pieces, um, different tubing that go into it, depending on what the device is. And sometimes those pieces can get clogged. They can get kinked, just like when you have IV uh, tubing that gets kinked. And so one of the more common things that happens is what happens, I'll paint the picture, picture for you. You'll have a patient that is experiencing um, symptoms, early symptoms of what maybe DKA, you know, is um, diabetic ketoacidosis. And they're starting to feel like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm starting to have some issues. Maybe they're starting to have some signs of just maybe not even DKA, but just like hyperglycemia. Well, one of the things you want to educate your patients on is making sure that that tubing is not kinked because maybe they're not, then maybe it's blocked the insulin and the insulin can't get through. Okay. And that's one of those things that, you know, simple, but very impactful. And so did want to bring that up because that's a common troubleshooting thing. It's not the only thing. This is not all inclusive, but that is one of those things because I remember bringing that up in a previous video of a common thing to troubleshoot. And this is one of those things as well. Now, lastly, I know that I whizzed through all these videos and I gave you guys basic knowledge on these things. I really wanted to introduce you to these different things. I'm pretty sure many of you guys knew all about the glucometers and I probably didn't tell you nothing new there, but I do know, especially those in primary care, we don't get a lot of opportunity to work with CGMs and insulin pumps, okay? And so I wanted to talk to you guys about this opportunity that I have. I've started a monthly series called the Diabetes Dialogues. And this month, we're going to be talking about diabetes tech. I am having triple board certified um, endocrinologist, Dr. Artie Thangadu come on and we're gonna talk all things diabetes tech. Now with the diabetes dialogue, each month the topic is going to change. This month just happens to be diabetes tech. But the reason why I am doing this is because I get questions that really need more in-depth explanation, more conversation about it and more background with it. And this is a time that we'll be able to do that a little bit more. And so I want to know who's interested because I know this is not what everybody's interested in. And that's fine, it's absolutely fine. But for those who do want to know more about this, who feel that in your, you know, maybe in your clinical journey, you're ready to learn more about this, 
I am going to hold a virtual learning session where Dr. Thangadu can answer all our questions about this. Now, like I've said in previous videos, I have a ton of questions that I'm already coming to the table. So if y'all don't have anything to ask, I know I do. But please, I really do want to know what your questions are so she can answer them all. She is really excited to be able to sit down and talk about this subject. And so if you are interested, go to the link in the description box. Click that link. Sign up for the interest group. Right now, it's just me sign, just seeing who's interested. Okay, and if you are interested, I will email you over more information about this opportunity and to see if this is something that you want to do. Also, if you have any questions, drop them below and we will try to answer them. Okay, again, I hope this was helpful. I hope all this information was helpful for you. If you um, don't mind, go ahead and subscribe. If you haven't watched the other videos, I'll link them in the description box as well so you can go back and see them. And then if you're on social media, I'm on Instagram almost every single day. You can follow me over there at the Diabetes MP. Again, you have been sitting here with Kim E, the Diabetes MP, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.